it looks like engine really. <laughs> so um, typically when we consider a quantum engine, we have a, 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 a some working body, which is a quantum system and it interacts with two baths as well as uh, with a system that is uh, taking a work, a storing work, which is uh, we call battery. Uh, recently, people were um, trying to consider the smallest possible quantum engines and um, uh, examples here in this paper by Tinden, Popescu and Skrzypczyk where there was uh, some three levels uh, working body and the battery was um, the, uh, such a unbounded from below ladder. Uh, here uh, by Gelbasa, Pimoska, Litsky and Kuritsky they consider two, two level system interacting with the two bus and, and an oscillator. Uh, uh, one can think of, uh, there are plenty of possible configurations uh, of setups, how, uh, how we can consider these quantum engines. I mentioned classification into autonomous engines and discrete engines. Autonomous engine is the one that has just is run by the time independent Hamiltonian. Uh, which is always on. So we have the Hamiltonian of the working body, which I will denote by S, and then Hamiltonian of the baths and the battery. And there is interaction Hamiltonian. So this uh, working body is interacting at the same time with hot bath, cold bath, and the battery. But it, to the, these uh, engines are um, uh, a bit hard to analyze. Uh, what, what one does, one just sets some models, some particular Hamiltonian, and then try to get some. Uh, uh, parameters like efficiency, uh, but it's not easy to think of optimal engines, for example. It's it's just good when one hand can compute parameters of just fixed engine. So to better understand uh, the how, how these micro engines uh, function and uh, to, to, to understand better my, uh, thermodynamics of microsystems, it's good to consider discrete engines where each, each time step, so wh where the Hamiltonian of uh, all these constituents is just this without any interaction. So H hot, bath, cold bath, battery and system. But at uh, discrete times, we apply a unitary that commutes with this all uh, pre Hamiltonian, which is that, uh, which means that this unitary will conserve total energy. Okay, so that's uh, discrete. And I will uh, consider in this talk uh, uh, engines that run in this discrete. Uh, uh, Manner. Uh, even more, uh, we will uh, assume that the environment is being refreshed. So whenever the system will interact with the environment, then a new uh, this is the environment, the environment act, uh, the, the bath uh, after interaction, and then new bath is provided. So, so th th this was analyzed recently in, in many papers where, and it's called collisional model. But also, it's uh, it's just a rephrasing a paradigm of so-called thermal operations. So, uh, which were well here in this paper, they were most uh, introduced. Okay, uh, there were also some papers in the 70s that are kind of this of the sort too. Uh, and uh, so, thermal operations are um, exactly such operations uh, that. On your system, you act with some unitary energy conserving unitary with the bath, but then next next time the next bath is uh, brought. So this is how it will look like. Yet uh, we are trying in order to understand what really is going on in with these micro engines. It's good to um, to uh, uh, introduce uh, such even more restricted engines where. Uh, the working body can uh, interact with each of these three systems only with one system at a time. And this we call minimal coupling engines. We introduce them in this paper and we are analyzing its properties. So uh, we will have separate heat stroke where the system uh, uh, working, our working body S, uh, will interact with the hot bath. Then, it will, then there will be work stroke where it interacts with the battery. And then uh, the cold heat stroke, where it interacts uh, with the, the uh, cold bath. We then can consider smallest engine of these, namely, uh, which has uh, with uh, has only these three strokes uh, that appears consecutively. So uh, 
uh, after so after uh, maybe next oh, maybe better start with this what you may have you may you may um, uh, combine these strokes into various uh, patterns so for example you may first apply a uh, um, uh, heat stroke then you can uh, uh, consider work stroke and then you can do back heat heat stroke so you can go here in circles then you can go here circles and here you could also go in circles but i don't believe it's 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 relevant so out of these three strokes you can combine in a single cycle you can combine various possible sequences but we will mostly consider this simple set, simpler setup. This is the smallest actually engine in the sense that this is the minimal number of strokes that actually can be used to draw work. If you just consider only two strokes, you cannot have work. So, so we will consider this three stroke engine. But first, before we uh, consider it, we have to uh, talk a little bit of just thermodynamics of such a uh, setup. Where we where the system just interacts with a single uh, single uh, uh, object. So first, let let's first talk about work stroke. So suppose uh, we have uh, system interacts at the moment only with the uh, work with a battery. So the question is how much energy can be transferred to the battery? If we want to compute efficiency or power or or, or work production per cycle, we have to be able to answer. To this question but also is this useful energy because we know that if this energy is like like transferred like by means of heat then of course it's not what we want we want to work so um aha, so uh, let me remind that the, the, so, so we imagine that there is unitary applied and this unitary commutes with the hamiltonian of the system and of the battery which means that the energy here is conserved and and as an effect the energy should go from system to the uh, uh, battery so now to assure that this work, that this energy transfer to battery is uh, as a good energy, so that we can think that this work, people, uh, the battery has to be kind of special. So people have considered uh, ideal weight, um, which was mostly pro um, uh, promoted in the papers by uh, uh, Sandu Popescu, um, Paul Stripczyk, uh, Linden, and and some others depending on configurations. So, so the, we have a battery which is uh, ideal weight, meaning a Hamiltonian is um, is has continuous spectrum and is uh, unbounded from below and from above, like we can imagine, like the standard weight in the gravitational field, but not uh, <laughs> like in this. Um, so, so, so where, where where the energy is just given by some pro proportional constants times uh, position. But one can also think of this infinite ladder, which is uh, uh, whose is, so this ideal uh, continuous weight is idealization of con of uh, discrete ladder that is uh, again unbounded from above to be from below. And uh, what is more uh, most important is that to have a uh, second law, if people have. Um, uh, in, uh, assumed that the interaction with the battery has to commute with the shift on this battery. So we have an uh, operator of the shift that shifts uh, the levels of the battery by epsilon. It's, uh, and and uh, it turns out that the, uh, uh, the um, acceptable uh, unitaries, acceptable interaction with the system, are those that commute with this shift. Um, uh, and then energy transferred to battery is just the original energy of the battery. Sorry, uh, yeah, sorry, it should be uh, uh, it should be opposite. Yes. So, so uh, the final energy of the battery minus the initial energy of the battery. So there's a question: Why is this energy transferred uh, 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 in this setup to the weight? Why is this useful energy? So in this uh, papers here, and they showed that um, second law is then satisfied in the sense that the entropy of the surrounding can only go up. And also that in, in the second paper, the fluctuation relations are obeyed in some even um, more general form. Uh, here we want to even provide a, another argument for that, uh, namely, we will uh, uh, argue, we'll show that if 
it will I'll give you more, show in more, but for in particular, if we have initial product state of the system and the weight, then the energy of the weight can increase only at the expense of so-called ergotropy of the system. So a weight will not accept any kind of energy from the system. So I will, I will explain what is this ergotropy and why then is this um, good, why, why it means that uh, second law is safe. So uh, in um, this, uh, Push and Voronovich in the 70s, they introduced so-called passive states. Passive states are such that if we apply arbitrary unitary to such a state, then the energy can only go down. Cannot, uh, sorry, sorry, that the energy, uh, so it should be passive state, it's such that the state from which we cannot get any, at any energy. So by any unitary, we cannot, decrease work. So now let's see whether this inequality is in, is in the right direction. We apply U and energy can only grow. So it should be opposite. Sorry, my like everything confused. So after applying unitary, the energy can only grow. Intuitively, this is the uh, passive state should have more population on lower levels. Then if we apply, for example, we permute levels, then the uh, entropy, then the energy will grow. And so Equilibrium state is a passive state. Keep state has um, uh, largest population on the because it's Gibbs factor e minus e. So it has small population on large energies and large population on small energies. And uh, following this uh, concept, uh, Alec Verdian, Balian, and Neuenhausen uh, have proposed the quantification of this concept, which is how much. Uh, energy I can get going from some state to some to state that is already passive. So essentially I apply arbitrary unitary and then trying to make this maximal. And of course, when this is already passive, then I cannot get more. So that's a different because of the state and this is passive version. Okay, so that's the ergotropy. And uh, for passive states, it vanishes. So for ergotropy for, um, for equilibrium state is just uh, zero. So this already indicates that that should be a kind of good energy, good type of energy. So we can uh, divide the total energy of the system into ergotropy, which is useful parts that they can be transferred to battery, as we as we will show, and passive energy that is the rest. So passive energy is the average energy, average energy of the system minus ergotropy. So here it is. Uh, here, for example, there is. Uh, a e max is the maximal energy, while uh, we have a bit of uh, uh, average energy, is, say, smaller, and average energy is divided into these two. Uh, so for pure states, um, average energy and ergotropy are the same. There are no passive energy. Passive energy is related to some entropy, to some to some mixedness. So, for example, pure excited state has maximal uh, uh, maximal uh, ergotropy, which is just equal to the omega, where omega is the gap for two-level system. Pure coherent state has ergotropy equal to energy, which is half of the gap. And for this mixed state, the energy is two thirds of omega, but ergotropy is only one third. So, so here, ergotropy and passive energy are equal. And so uh, if we have such a system with uh, one third being here and two thirds being here, then the unitary that, un that is maximizes this expression is just flip. We just flip these two levels. And then this is already useless state, but by flipping, we kind of imagine that we could transfer this, the rest of the, the, this useful part of energy somewhere. And uh, for a um, long time, this uh, ergotropy was considered uh, without explicit battery. So it was as assumed that you can go, uh, that indeed it can be passed to somewhere. But if you take um, just mm, some not so good battery, then it turns out that you can transfer much more to it. So that's why it's now interesting to consider erg ergotropy and the concept of this uh, battery and to see that indeed. So we proved that the following, uh, which is part of our result later, uh, I will tell more, that if uh, we have this interaction of our working body with the battery, which is translationally invariant and preserves energy, of course, then for initial product state of the system and the weight, uh, the uh, 
the uh, energy of the battery can only change at the expense of decrease of ergotropy of the system. So weight cannot get more energy than the ergotropy of the system. It accepts only good form of energy. So it's yet another signature that this uh, kind of battery is uh, uh, for thermodynamics well suited. Um, so uh, we answered this question, uh, So, but we don't know yet how much energy can this uh, whole ergotropy be transferred, right? We, we don't know. We know that at most, uh, but we do not at the moment, uh, I didn't say whether it's possible to get a full ergotropy. So, how, so what we would like to have, we'd like to have here is the initial system, which has some part of ergotropy here, passive energy. We'd like to, that all ergotropy goes to the battery and the system is already passive. Can we do this? So the answer is the following. If the state is product indeed, then if the state of the system has no coherences, hmm, then arbitrary initial state, for arbitrary initial state of the weight, we can pass all the ergotropy. But if the state of the system has some coherences, then we need a very special state of battery in order to transfer this ergotropy to the battery. Namely, the battery has also has to have coherence. Now, so this is a bit of a problem for if we want to consider engines, because imagine in engine, this in each cycle, this um, this uh, working bodies interacts with the battery, and uh, the battery is you know the energy of the battery is growing, so we cannot like think of some steady state of the total system uh, system and the battery. So it's kind of hard to to say, oh, my battery will be have this kind of coherences and it will work because it may change simply during cycles, and you know who knows what will be the state of the battery in next and for the, for the cycle by cyclicity, we kind of the working body should have the same state, but the battery is, its energy will grow and it's by no means a um, fixed state. So we need so, so the state of of, of uh, the battery may change uh, in in the action of this engine, and the total state will not be product. So our previous theorem that I said, the previous result, this is not uh, really useful for engines. So we are in a situation that is not so good because either we should really keep, if we want to analyze the performance of engines, either we should keep track the state of the battery, which is difficult because it's a, you know, it's just some big system, or I mean, if it's dimensional and even weird because it's Hamiltonian bounded from below, or restrict the states without coherences and entanglement. But that's very boring. Yes, we want to do quantum engines, not just uh, diagonal engines. So, uh, but we have a solution. And this is a part, second part of my talk where I uh, show you that tool, very nice tool <clears throat> that we introduced to overcome this problem. Uh, it will be a control marginal state. That will be the main object. So this control marginal state allows to encapsulate all the needed information about the system and battery in the object of size of the system itself. So if we have working body two level, then our object will be two level rather than two level and the, and the battery. How we do that? So we introduce a, a, a control shift operator. So it shifts the battery. So, uh, by the energy uh, epsilon i, given that this our system was in that energy, so that's a unitary um, such control shift. And then what we do, we take the total state, uh, working body and battery state, and we it may be entangled, semi correlated, whatever coherent, and then we apply this uh, control shift, and we trace out the battery. So the resulting state. Is a, is a state of a working body solely. And it's no, if, we, if we would do this trace over B without these uh, uh, shifts, then we'll have just marginal state. But because there were these control shifts, we call it control marginal. And it's not, in general, not equal to margin. It is equal if the original states were all diagonal in the energy basis and if they were product. Then it's just the same as marginal. 
But if not, then it is different and it indeed encodes what we need from the battery. So what we now want to uh, check if we want to use this, because you know this is very artificial conception for a while, so we have to see whether it works well. So in a work stroke, we want to know whether we can control evolution of this state, because it would be, you know, if at each step you to, to see how it changes, you, you would need to look again at the battery. We, we don't want it. We want evolution solely in terms of this control marginal. Yes, so we want really uh, to deal with an object that is two levels. So we hope that during a uh, work of engine, we will be able to keep track its state solely. Then we want to express the energy transfer to battery again, solely by the state, not by looking at the total state of, of system and the battery, but only on the state, on this small system. And the same about his stroke. What's the evolution of this control margin state? And what's the energy drawn from the heat battery? in terms of this control marginal state. So let's first consider control marginal state in the work stroke. So um, let's first analyze a bit the energy conserving and translationally invariant unitary between working board and battery. We said that this is, we will be re restricting to this kind of unitaries because they like assures us a second law uh, in that, from that previous results, we know it. So, uh, so it, one, uh, I guess in this paper by and others, it was shown that this unitary can be represented in the following way, that it actually is, uh, is, uh, can be encoded by just means of, by, by means of some unitary that acts solely on the system, and then is in this way lifted to, uh, elevated to the level of system battery joint. So now there is already, we kind of maybe see how it will work, namely instead of uh, actually actually already on the level of this evolution here, we have something that is only on working body uh, uh, size. So now uh, we verify, which is uh, quite funny, that this control marginal state evolves just according to this small unitary. And the derivation is this quick now here. So uh, where we uh, use the fact that this unitary has to be of this special form. So then instead of using evolution of on the total system battery, we just use this uh, V which represents, which encodes this evolution and apply it to sigma S. So in work stroke, we'll just see how it will evolve. Hmm. Then, it, which means, what I said means that the following diagram commutes. We have the total system we apply here, the total unitary, uh, and here we compute the uh, marginal control marginal state, and we apply just this. So, so that's the first uh, thing. And then the question, the second question, you know, how we can describe by means of this control marginal state the energy that was transferred to the battery. Hmm? So uh, now we consider arbitrary state of uh, battery and working body, not just product. So let, again, we consider the unitary that conserves energy and the shift invariant on the battery. Then we know it can be represented in this way. And the result is the following, that the energy increase of the battery is equal to ergotropy decrease of the control marginal state. So, in, and, and this is the difference. So it's not equal to ergotropy decrease of the just working body state. When, as I said, when the battery is, uh, so uh, when the battery is in a different state, than, when the total state of the battery and the working body, it's not just very a simple diagonal state or something like that, then more, usually, the change of ergotropy of the system will not be equal to the increase of energy. But margin, control marginal state has this beautiful feature. So it's enough. So if you want to know how much work you produce, how much energy you put to the uh, weight, it's just enough to look at your two level system and, and compute the ergotropy decrease. Uh, proof is so uh, complicated. Uh, Sorry, Michael. 
Uh, I yeah. see that there are a few small questions in the chat. These yeah, are yeah. mostly clarifications. Yes. I missed one when, I came, when it came up and we will ask later, but there is one that is relevant to what you're saying now. Mm -hmm. So the question is, uh, is the, the control marginal procedure in fact a way to simulate the coherence in the energy basis? This is a question that- no, no, Not only, also entanglement me. between two systems. So it's encapsulating everything. Yeah. Uh, in particular, if in particular coherences in uh, of, of systems itself, but of course we know entanglement is uh, also related to coherences. So it 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 is about coherences of of total system working body and battery, right? Huh? Okay. 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 Good. Okay. So this is uh, uh, okay. So 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 the proof is again kind of not so hard. Uh, and then we go to heat stroke. Okay. So normally in heat, uh, just a second because I uh, here I uh, uh, <laughs> forgive me. I uh, this thing should be uh, bath. Mm. So I have system. And I have here bath. And then I apply unitary. So then effectively on a system, I get the some uh, some so here's uh, look, here should be unitary conserving energy. Here should be bath. So I apply unitary conserving energy on a system and a bath. I get system and a bath out. But it turns out that I can do the same just on control marginal state. So here, so before, look, before there was a difference. So before I had here totally unitary, and here th th there was some, again, unitary. Here, uh, this, is, uh, this is something that acts on the marginal, and the same, just the same action will be applied to marginal state. So here is just no difference because this is so-called thermal operation, which arises from acting on a heat bath with the energy physics unitary, and this uh, thermal operation has some feature, which is covariance under energy shifts, time, 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 time evolution shifts. And that's why it's just the same. So we're in, in, in heat uh, stroke, it's even easier. It's just uh, evolution is such a, a, the same as uh, the uh, evolution of the uh, marginal state. Now the heat uh, transferred uh, during the heat stroke. Uh, so the, what's the heat? The heat transfer is equal to the change of energy of the bath. And uh, because of energy conservation, it would be th the same as change of energy um, or minus, sorry, minus change of energy of the system. So, uh, but because uh, this uh, self Hamiltonian uh, commutes with this uh, shift control shift operator, we just easily get that average energy of the system is the same as energy of the control marginal state. So, Again, heat, we just compute directly looking at the control marginal state by looking at the change of its energy, right? So that's easy. So to summarize this part, to summarize this part, um, we have the situation that, uh, uh, that uh, this total system of working body and battery can be changed into just solar system on and uh, there is a difference on the on the batteries we use this uh, operation instead of this but they are one to one and this control mar marginal state encodes correlations entanglement coherences even classical correlations it's it's nice to, sir, to work with uh, this uh, I, I think we had problems even with classical correlations so it, because the the this working body is getting correlated step by step with the with the battery and it was not easy to analyze it. More, more on control marginal state, uh, see um, here this paper by Martin Woodbaker, uh, um, our co-author, um, and uh, where he exploits it further. So now we go to our engine, okay? So how the, so we already uh, know that uh, so, so how how now the engine will work? Um, uh, we have this system which we will we will now describe by control marginal state. This battery will not be any more uh, explicitly considered because it's it, but in this picture I uh, 
draw it because we want to show what, what happens with the energy flows. So let's start with he, with uh, interacting here with the uh, hot bath. We have initial system that is passive, has no useful energy. It starts to interact with the hot bath and it gets a package of good energy of ergotropy, but also necessarily with passive energy. So that's essentially all some quantitative version of second law. So you cannot get from heat bath only good energy. You have to get it together with the bad energy, passive energy. So then we have this. Next, we go to the battery. In the battery, we deposit the ergotropy, and that's the work of time in the cycle. Then we go to, uh, then, we, then the state is only, has only passive energy, it's, it's passive. And not all, but part of this passive energy is stored in a cold bath. And now the state has small amount of passive energy and can accept again some passive energy from the hot bath. And this is the, how the cycle is um, closing. Uh, so now is the, our result. Mm, the result is the following. Aha, so that's the second. So what's the goal? Uh, we want to obtain optimal engine. So we want to find parameters with optimal efficiency and optimal amount of work produced by the cycle. So efficiency is just that you divide this work by this heat and this work is, uh, it's just work production per cycle. So we want to find optimal engine. It's really very minimal engine. It's just two level, uh, we'll consider two level working body and only three cycles, okay? And only coupling to one system at a time. So it's extremely restricted one. And now the question is, what's the optimal efficiency? And there is no free lunch. So normally you can uh, say, um, it says that my internet connection is unstable, but can you hear me? Yes. Can people hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes, yes, yes. We can hear you, Good, and we can see you. Yes. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so what I said, I said that we want to. Uh, ah, so there is no freelance. So, we cannot uh, do such a following thing that oh, we show that it's the optimal engine has Carnot efficiency, and then and then we are done because we cannot have larger. Okay. Namely, yeah. even optimal engine here will not have Carnot efficiency e even in some. Um, uh, okay, here we do not have continuous. So normally, a kind of efficiency you obtain when you have a zero power in continuous engines. But this is a, an engine which has is like a like a discrete engine, so it, it, it doesn't have zero power. It always gets some. Hello. So, uh, so we cannot go this way that we compute uh, that it turns out that it has kind of efficiency. It will have simply more efficiency. So, um, so this, this one thing, and the other thing is that we have this control marginal state, and we uh, we want to really optimize over all possible situations. So uh, we should assume that it's coherent. It's, uh, it's coherent, which will somehow tell us. It's a reflection of uh, coherences in the total state of uh, system and the battery and also possibly entanglement. So here is what we obtained. We were able to find optimal efficiency and work production for that, that engine. So let me repeat here. We consider optimal three-stroke minimal coupling engine. What does it mean? Working body is a qubit. This engine can couple only to one system, bath or battery at a time. The interaction with each of these is energy conserving unitary. Bath refresh after each, each interaction. This is like collisional picture. Battery or, or thermal operations picture. A battery is a weight. Interaction with battery is translation invariant um, with respect to the shifts of the energy. And we only consider three strokes in the cycle. So here are formulas for optimal efficiency and optimal uh, uh, work production per cycle. Look that this uh, efficiency is, uh, uh, maybe later I will have written, yes. So it can operate only if temperature satisfies this. So me, 
So if given given some cold temperature, the hot bath temperature has to be high enough. Okay. So it's not unlike the Carnot efficiency. Carnot engine operates between uh, if only the uh, only you have difference of temperatures. Here, for some region of temperature, it simply cannot uh, it cannot run. And um, in this engine, uh, in this optimal engine out of this family uh, of all three stroke minimal coupling engines, we have the situation that effic maximum efficiency is attained at the same time as the optimal work production per cycle supply. So there is not a trade-off in this uh, sense. You can get, there will be some, uh, so yes, so, so, so you do not need, uh, so, so yes. And then what is maybe disappointing? So the control marginal steady state is diagonal after each stroke in this optimal engine. So this means that the optimal engine must be uh, classical. Well, it's not. Really, people wouldn't say it's classical. It must di be diagonal with respect to Hamiltonian, and so so no coherences in energy basis, no entanglement. Uh, although, although it's not if in microsystems, it's not really a uh, classical regarding battery because we would consider a classical state of coherence rather than just diagonal. But that's maybe for some further discussion. So now let's look at the um, parameters of this um, engine. How, how it looks like this. So let, let me just uh, show you what are these efficiencies and, and how it looks like. So here is the uh, temperature of the cold bath, uh, which is in unit less, uh, unit less because we multiply with the gap of our uh, working body. And here is uh, inverse temperature of the hot, again, uh, multiply with the gap. First look, here we have this uh, black region where the simply temperature of the hot is smaller than temperature of the cold. Then it doesn't work like an engine. So we, we, we do not get any work in this situation. Um, then you have this uh, region, region here, which is kind of a violet region. And in this region is precisely the region of temperature where does, our engine doesn't work. So this is this kind of funny condition which we do not yet understand. Well, uh, it's just some expression. So so here it doesn't work. And now in this here in this region, the uh, for fixed uh, the, the the colors here uh, are says that for fixed uh, cold bath temperature, the, the, uh, they they say that the cold temperature the hot temperature is larger and larger. So for example, here there is very large hot temperature. And these uh, are constant efficiency curves, right? So, uh, so we see that if we want to have, uh, if we want to increase the temperature of the cold bath and fix, uh, uh, just a second. Uh, no, let, let me compare it with Carnot engine because that's maybe. So we know that Carnot engine has efficiency just one minus t, um, t um, uh, one minus. Tc by Th. So in this picture, they would be just straight line because here is, okay, well, just a second. Here is one over Tc, here's one over Th. Yes. So Carnot efficiencies are here in the inset. These are these, uh, these uh, what are uh, um, dust lines. And uh, so in particular, we see that, of course, Carnot engine also in this violet, violet region uh, works. But uh, from this picture, you can see that how uh, this our engine are worse than Carnot engine, even it's optimal in our situation. Um, and uh, why it works? Because it needs uh, it needs a higher temperature. So here, um, this is this is the inverse temperature. Yes. So to keep efficiency, if you increase uh, the if you increase the cold in Carnot, you have to increase the hot at the same rate. But here you have to increase the uh, uh, hot uh, temperature in a much higher rate to get just the same rate to keep efficient. Uh, so, um, so here also you see this irreversibility of this engine. So you simply cannot get uh, uh, Carnot. It must be irreversible due to this 
finite smallest possible interaction right so um uh, let me come to conclusion uh, namely uh, we uh, have analyzed three stroke engine and obtained its optimal efficiency then we and, and work on this then we considered uh, that uh, engines where you have more uh, more strokes in one cycle but that we repeat hot hot battery hot, sorry sorry oh my god yes yes so so the the mm, working body interacts with hot bath with battery hot bath battery hot bath battery, and n times and we show that efficiency is well the same i said i would say even worse i i remember and work per cycle, of course, is larger. Why? Because it, in each this in each cycle between hot and battery, we get a bit more work. So this all together is much larger than single. It's 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 many steps of drawing ergotropy. Um, so so per, per, it's larger. This is not surprising because we just in this cycle we have many many steps. Now we have a fine open problem. Find optimal efficiency for minimal capping engine with arbitrary number and order of strokes per cycle. And this we were not able to solve, even though we deal just with the, you know, saying just with the two level working body now because we have this beautiful control marginal state. But still, because it's arbitrary sequence, it's our, it's additional complexity. You have to consider all possible sequences. And the main problem is the uh, cyclicity. So, uh, so that to to uh, that, that 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 you have to consider uh, after this. Suppose you find out, uh, imagine an arbitrary sequence of cycle of of strokes. Then you have to make sure that the last, le, the final state is equal to the original state, and that um, uh, ah, and, and okay, good. So I think that's that that's uh, the the end of my talk. Thank you uh, very much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for the very insightful talk with these very beautiful results. Um, there are a few questions in the chat, some of which are about the assumptions that go into, into, the, in, into the results. So let me kind of paraphrase some of them. Uh, so one question is that, um, well, there are several assumptions about the end. So this is from Oliver. So there are a lot of assumptions about that you are looking mm -hmm. at. So which of the assumptions you, you would think is the most interesting to drop? And uh, so that's one question. A related question is that- um, Drop, uh, sorry, that's somehow- For the assumption of separating the heat stroke from the work stroke. So don't we lose uh, some optimality there? This was asked by Rafa. Um, after all, in a Carnot cycle, we thermalize and obtain work simultaneously. So we we'll say maybe uh, we can start from these two questions about the assumptions and, and then go through some of the others. Yes, so I think it's, it's precisely the, the, the thing. Uh, in previous papers, uh, the, this um, uh, one consider more global operations. So, for example, hot bath together with battery and the system. This was in papers by Skriptic and others, and this allows to get Carnot. So, what we did, we have uh, we uh, have uh, make it more stringent to, to see what happens in a particular um, to what happens in this in this more restricted scenario, and. Um, so one can say, well, so we produce the worst engines. But if we restrict the scenario, you can maybe get better understanding why in the more optimal scenario you can get Carnot and what you lose. So that was this kind of uh, thing. And also, yeah, so maybe that's one question. But it also is a way probably to see the flows of, uh, of, of, of energy yeah. and mm -hmm. work uh, more neatly. Yes. So there was the other question was about which assumption you would consider relaxing first. Which one is the kind of the most important you would like to relax if you had to? Mm. Yeah. So precisely, precisely this that one, one should then one. consider jointly the battery heat bath and and uh, and assist. All right. Thanks. There were a, another two questions that were somehow related to the assumptions. Um, so one question was. Um, well, no. Uh, one of the first question was not about the assumption. Was what would happen? Um, in the relation between ergotropy and passive energy, if you go to the classical limit, this was a question that was asked during the talk. I thought it was better to hold it uh, to the end. So, is there any difference in the classical limit, or pretty much the whole story that you said would remain the same? Mm. Okay. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I, I would think this is, I would think because I th ultimately we, we have, uh -huh, we have considered, uh, it turns out that coherence doesn't matter uh, and, and I mean, so I would think this is the way of also understanding the uh, macroscopic uh, machines in some sense. Uh, although, although I, 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 okay, good. So, so I guess first of all, in the limit, first of all, uh, the, the the macroscopic machines that we consider are usually do not have this uh, funny uh, this this minimal coupling uh, feature that we only either go to butter or to to the to the system. So. So then, then the, the um, quantities which are relevant are uh, such as free energy. So this uh, ergotropy is when you really uh, separate this uh, interaction. Mm -hmm. You can imagine that you simply, yeah, also, also if you have, uh, is this, if you interact all together with the bath and your system, then you, uh, then you should look at the ergotropy of the total. Bath plus system, and that's um, in for for proper baths. That's a free energy. So even even in here, you get uh, already. This. And in the macroscopic machines, you will have just this piece. Mm -hmm. That's what, what I think. I didn't think much about this, but I think. Yes, I, I think you went even beyond what the original question was. Probably the question was just: uh, Is the relation between ergotropy and um, and passive energy remaining the same? That not all the energy can be used. I think the answer to that was just probably yes. I guess. But, uh, mm, the yeah, yeah. quantities Ra themselves. Morally, yes. Moral, morally, sure, you, you cannot. But, but it will not be quantified. I think I think that this useless energy, useless energy will be now not a gotra, but free energy, I think. So the, mm -hmm. the, so the uh, analog of the passive energy will just total energy, average energy min minus the free energy. But, but okay. that's because the minimal coupling, I think, is not, uh, be, we cannot keep it uh, for this. Um, for this um, classical limit, but okay, this is to be discussed. I have to keep it. Uh, it's good. Uh, okay, if we have time, maybe there are two last questions that remained in the chat. Um, so one is just uh, how would this work if we had a harmonic oscillator instead of a weight? So ah, a, th thank you very much for this question. From below, I I didn't have like a space in my talk to to tell about this. Yeah, so. So uh, in uh, th there is a fascinating thing is how uh, to because the battery which is oscillator is not anymore uh, 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 automatically doesn't satisfy the uh, second law because uh, because you do not have this translational invariance. So one thing which you can think of you even just stick take take oscillator and stick it to the heat bath. Its energy will grow, but ob obviously it's 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 not a useful energy. So. So uh, therefore, you have to first uh, think of how to, you know, to design a scenario where this oscillator can can be a, uh, can satisfy second law. And we have uh, I can recommend our paper with uh, Pavel Mazurek and, uh, and and uh, Patrick Lipka Bartosik in Quantum recently. Uh, no, it's accepted in Quantum, where we just consider this. We consider how. Uh, how second law is, um, you know, what corrections to second law you have to the oscillate uh, when you have oscillator uh, rather than just translation in a random way. And we actually uh, now develop uh, a lot this problem. So we have an, another further project with, uh, with uh, Martin Bobek and Paolo Mazurek where we uh, are trying to, to see how to have now uh, instead of, of weight uh, 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 oscillator or, or, or just half weight. Thank you. So let's thank again uh, Michael for the exciting uh, talk and exciting results shared with us. Thank you. Thank you very much.